Grand Rising. It is Wednesday and we're about to start the day. We're a few weeks out from Know That I Was Launch. Of course, just like we build any company, things are not going as we expected. So we're having to innovate to get some eyeballs on the project. So we got Micah coming over today to work out and we're gonna co-work at the House of Web 3. Morning routine's already done. So now I'm about to just get ready so we can get it. Let's get it. to read for like 15 minutes right now 15 30 uh, Micah should be getting here any minute but yeah this book has been pretty good but as always let God know I'm reading this book to be a better service to my fellow men using myself and my companies as an outlet I pray he let the important things stick out stick in my brain be able to be recalled at the perfect times I pray he let me read at high speeds high levels of retention and zero distractions My good brother. My dude. What's up, What's man? Up, brother, man? How you doing, bro? I'm real good, man. Let's get the sweat on. Let's you fucking know? do it, bro. of Web3, let's get it. Don't get me wrong, I'm not missing any meals. I'm truly grateful for all the relationships I have in my life. But trying to get know-it-alls off the ground has been extremely tough. And it's honestly taken everything I have. <laughs> I mean, as it should, but like, fuck. We've wasted so much time and money working with shitty vendors that didn't hold up the end of the bargain. Like, we paid thousands of dollars to developers and marketing agencies that strung us along for over a year with little to nothing to show for it. Not to mention the thousands we spent on press and other media ventures that didn't get us the results that we thought we would get. And to put the icing on the cake, given all the time we wasted, it made it terrible timing to launch an NFT project, even though our utility is super solid. Like sometimes timing is really everything. I learned a lot of lessons though. The biggest thing is that you should just focus on your core offering at first and then and only then expand after your product is one of the best in the world at just one thing. And it's crazy because I already knew this shit, but for some reason I didn't listen to myself. <sighs> I guess I thought our shit was so good that it wouldn't matter. But the truth is that in the beginning, how your product is packaged is actually more important than the product itself because your product has to be good to stay relevant, but it has to be packaged good to even be noticed. I learned that every time you attempt to communicate more than one thing, 
you're splitting the attention of your audience. So simplification is actually the ultimate form of sophistication. It's just that simplicity and easy are not synonymous terms, even though it may seem like it. Like getting to the root of something is hard as fuck, but that's what you have to do when you're simplifying something. Like just think about how much more painful it gets to your eyes the more layers you peel back on an onion. (sighs) It's all good though, man. I feel like we're finally on the right track. Plus all this extra time allowed us to make our product a lot better and get some super key people on our team. So we're just gonna sell our course a traditional way and instead of having an NFT component right now, we'll just release it when it makes sense because less is more y'all, trust me. I'm all good though, still got faith, still smiling, still pushing. All right, so we just worked for like four hours and I'm gonna take a quick lunch break and get back to it. Guys, look at this view. The Golden Gate Bridge. Say hi guys. House of Fine Arts, downtown. Good lunch test by the tunnel tops. Now we're heading back in. having a VC pitched kind of event here. A lot of founders and investors here. So I'm gonna see if I can meet some people. And then we're gonna head to one of my favorite beaches in the Bay Area. Let's get it. the beach i got my little baby chauffeur i mean you know how it is it's a little cloudy we'll see if we get to see a sunset whoa 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 so we have to rewind that the only reason well part of the reason why i wanted to go to this beach is because of the drive-in looks like you're driving into fucking New Zealand. So let's rewind that. I went back on a clear day just so y'all can see how it looks. foggier than the sun beach to be honest though you know now that my foot is healed i'm just happy to be able to go on these beaches with these long hikes so I'm now sure i'm bet it's gonna be clear when we get down there it's i hope like, so and, oh, just on top. I yeah on top i'm on this hiatus now where i'm just going to all the beaches with the long hikes just because i haven't been able to do it for the past few months <laughs> Somebody got proposed to. Y'all, look at this cave. All right, y'all gotta time this. It's another private beach over here that I go camping at.
heading back. Oy, so we made it back to the car. That hike was real, huh? It was so good. It was really good. It was like so foggy. And just the weather is perfect. I'm sweating. Oh, yeah, I'm sweating like it in my mouth. It was just like really good. Yeah, I can't really see the stairs like when you look back though. Yeah. It was so foggy, but it was nice. Definitely. Now we're about to head experience. home. She eating salsa. That's gonna have her belly hot. Just Good made it morning. back. It's been a long day. It's been a long time. <laughs> Should have let you. Stop. <laughs> Taking a little eating break. Got some cheese fries. And this bombs up. Watching some narrow tail. All right, y'all. So it's been a long, productive, tired day. Got up early this morning. Went to bed late last night. But these goals ain't gonna accomplish themselves, you know what I'm saying? So, about to get back to work here. It is 11.30, I believe. Probably work till like 12.30, maybe one. Call it a night, we'll see. But I super appreciate y'all for tuning in. And I'll see y'all on the next episode. Peace and love. So, um, that brings us to our fourth counterintuitive point. Startups are all consuming. If you start a startup, it will take over your life to a degree that you cannot imagine. Um, and if it succeeds, it will take over your life for a long time, for several years at the very least, maybe a decade, maybe the rest of your working life. So there's a real opportunity cost here. It may seem to you that Larry Page has an enviable life, but there are parts of it that are definitely unenviable. The way the world looks to him is that he started running as fast as he could at age 25, and he has not stopped to catch his breath since. Every day, shit happens within the Google empire that only the emperor can deal with, and he, as the emperor, has to deal with it. If he goes on vacation for even a week, a whole backlog of shit accumulates, and he has to bear this uncomplainingly because number one, as the company's daddy, he can never show fear or weakness. And number two, if you're a billionaire, you get zero, actually less than zero sympathy if you complain about having a difficult life. <laughs> Which has this strange side effect that the difficulty of being a successful startup founder is concealed from almost everyone who's done it. People who win the 100 meters in the Olympics, like they walk up to them and they're going like, <laughs> right? And like Larry Page is doing that too, but you never get to see it.